Hi, my name is Jessica LeClaire. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm a clinical instructor and PhD student with the UW-Madison School of Nursing. And today I'm gonna to share a little bit about a scoping review that I'm doing on nursing strategies for environmental justice. And first I wanna share a story about my first light bulb moments regarding the intersection of planetary health, environmental justice, and nursing. So in 2012, I was working as a public health nurse with a low-income neighborhood in Madison to address resident concerns about increasing violence among youth. And this is one of our most diverse neighborhoods with residents of many different races and ethnicities and languages, frankly, from all around the world. And at, at a neighborhood meeting, the local elementary school principal mentioned that students from this neighborhood were increasingly missing school because of increased asthma symptoms and other breathing problems over the last few years. Then the family shared how their apartment buildings had not yet recovered from the flooding in 2008. And by 2012, their basements were boarded up due to the mold that had also seeped into the vents. So now every time it rained, even a few inches, their basements and yards flooded. Now families ask that we not call building inspection or talk with the landlords or get our environmental health sanitarians involved because they very much feared eviction. Now, Madison has very few affordable housing options and parents told us that they would rather stay in their unhealthy apartments than sleep in their cars. Now, rather than place the burden on this community on the front lines of climate change, we met with our stormwater engineer who shared that the water table in these neighborhoods is so high because of the lake levels. And the lake levels were controlled by the state's DNR. And the issues there are that the lakefront property owners want to maintain their docks and their boats and their property values. And I was told that it was beyond the control of the city and that was the end of the story at that time. I was told there was nothing further that I could do as a public health nurse. Now, of course, the story didn't end and there was ongoing flooding concern. This was highlighted again in 2016. Residents were noticing the increased frequency in rainfall and storms and flooding, especially from a neighborhood creek, which had been pouring out onto the adjacent streets. It was creeping up their lawns and flooding the basements again. A resident even shared video footage with me of children playing in the floodwaters, which we can assume contain sewage, chemicals, bacteria, and mold. And this particular creek is especially known to carry agricultural chemicals. And of course, this issue is only getting worse. In August of 2018, across our entire state, we experienced terrible storms and flooding. We had nine to 15 inches in Dane County, which resulted in one death. Now residents all along our isthmus are experiencing continued terrible flooding and you know they've sandbagged their, ho they sandbagged their homes and so on. And now this climate emergency is spreading beyond our most marginalized populations and it remains a very complicated issue. And so our relationship as nurses with those who experience disproportionate environmental risks makes us uniquely positioned to promote environmental justice in a potentially powerful way. For example, nurses who work in the fields of global health, public health, community health, and tribal health often work with marginalized populations that you see here who are exposed to environmental hazards. Marginalized populations experience inequitable distribution of environmental hazards and subsequent health inequities due to oppression from racism, socioeconomic and or immigration status, and other social identities. And another important thing to keep in mind is that many of these identities that you see here intersect. And so when we're experiencing oppression from multiple sources, we become further weathered and less resilient in the, in the face of planetary health issues like climate breakdown. And then of course, within marginalized populations, we also have extremely vulnerable populations, such as the very young, the very old, people who are pregnant and so on. And these are the populations who, are ex who experience the most severe health effects from environmental degradation. And so advocating for healthy environments, for eliminating health inequities, and for social justice is actually a professional obligation for nurses. So as a result of my frustration with not feeling effective in promoting environmental justice, I'm now in the process of conducting a scoping review to examine the full range of research regarding strategies nurses have used to address environmental justice through their work. The purpose of the scoping review is to describe the range of peer-reviewed literature 
including research findings and gaps in the literature regarding strategies nurses use to promote environmental justice. So my database search yielded 1,057 potentially eligible articles, which were independently screened by two reviewers. And the included final sample consists of 35 studies. Data from the studies have been extracted and we're hoping the final results will be completed by uh, this summer in 2020. And my ultimate hope is that understanding how nurses integrate environmental justice strategies into their work will inform future evidence-based interventions reduce environmental inequities, and work towards creating a, an equitable environment for individuals, families, and communities. And thank you so much for listening to my flash talk.